for 15 years in first creating and then running Pretoria University's Gordon Institute of Business Science. Professor Nick Benadel is stepping down. He's the dean of the organization. Uh, he's been a teacher, but also, Nick, uh, a business manager as well. And I guess at some point in time, it's a big operation uh, when we were talking about it last, 300 staff. Mm. Uh, you have to decide, are you going to carry on teaching? Are you going to carry on uh, running a business into the long term? You've had a long spell there. Did that, did that shape your decision to finally step away? No, not really. I mean, I think there's a natural time at which leaders should move on and make way for others. And I've had a wonderful time establishing the school and before that in other business schools. So I've been around the business education world for a long time. And it's been a great privilege to start an institution from scratch and, and to try and make something of a success. So there comes a natural time for the organization also. One doesn't want to stay too long. And, and I felt this was a good time. The school's in good shape. Uh, it's done well. And, and I think business supports the notions that we stand for. And I'm sure that will continue in the future. It almost feels as though you're leaving this uh, teenage child behind to fend for themselves in the world. But yeah, uh, take us back to the creation right. of uh, Gibbs as an institution. Well, I haven't thought about it quite as it probably is a teenager, <laughs> a bit unruly, 17, 15, depending on how you count. So the, the beginnings uh, were the University of Pretoria uh, approached me through Johan van Sale, who's now the CEO of Sunlam. Uh, he was the vice chancellor at the time. And uh, he wanted to explore the possibility of, uh, of me playing a, a role with them. And he and I sort of co-engineered the idea of establishing, not in Pretoria, but in Johannesburg, which of course is the, the center of the business community. So that's how it began. Well, some people in Stellenbosch would say there's a different center, but uh, that's a different <laughs> conversation. Well, he might say that now. <laughs> uh, well, Johan is also, yeah. uh, he's going to be retiring soon as oh. well. So mm. I suppose the two of you are going off into the sunset together. Are you going to do anything special? With what? With post Gibbs? Well, I'm going to keep teaching, as, as I've said, um, and I'm going to certainly work hard the next six months to make sure the handover and succession goes well. Um, I've got a tremendous curiosity about what's happening in South Africa and elsewhere. Mm. It really is an extraordinary time we're living in, and so the chance to move away but from the management and to think about how to help business, how to help South African business in whatever way I can, uh, that's certainly going to be part of my future. So your analysis of what's unfolding in the business space and from in South Africa's perspective when it comes to leadership, are we moving on to mediocrity maybe, drift? No, no, I think South Africa has very resilient uh, companies, very resilient institutions. It's still this frontier mentality. Um, and I think we'll spawn a new generation of businesses. There's something in our DNA that's quite spectacular. And as I often say, there's no country of our size economy that's produced more globally competitive companies and they're spreading their wings around the world. Of course, we have huge structural challenges. Uh, many of them are, are challenges for business, but there's a kind of in-bed resilience about it. All my life, I think, it's been five minutes to midnight. The country's been on the verge of some calamitous event. And the 90s sort of opened all of that up and created a new environment. And many people feel things are difficult. I think things are South African. That's who we are. We're that kind of restless country. And business does well in this country in spite of m many things we say. Profits are pretty good, even though the economy at the moment is a, a bit tight. Uh, but we'll come through this phase because there's an inherent entrepreneurial skill in South Africa. Is that encroachment that we're seeing increasingly by government into the private sector? Isn't that a concern for you, given that yeah. business has been resilient, but yeah, can it continue in It is a concern. But remember, we lived through this after 48, uh, you know, as the National well, Party saw itself. Certainly well, not well, Gugu and I. Not mm. you and I. <laughs> <laughs> not me neither, <laughs> let me point out. <laughs> I don't like these ageist comments. But, um, you know, the, the National Party saw itself as building false capitalism. It, it, it instituted and built the Sassels and Eskims and Iskos and, and the Spurvia. And it used that to create jobs, and it did it within its own mandate fairly efficiently. I'm, I'm not in principle against the state being involved in the economy. It's a question of how much and how. But I think we would share the idea that the state should be an enabler, and maybe it's a little too involved in the economy, and maybe there is some encroachment, which I think business must reasonably argue for. Um, I think the relationship between business and the state is going to be critical in this country. And I think it's very important this dialogue begins because what we've got to put first is the nation. Then there's the question of the state mm. and business. The dialogue begins. Mm. Mm. Now, in any normal state, that's not a statement that one would hear from someone who's as plugged in as you are. No, no, but is I the think dialogue. That yeah, there is a dialogue. Mm. I, I, mm. I, you know, I think there are lots of, of institutions. Some may not be as dynamic as we would want, 
that represent the different sectors. Um, and there are many dialogues and there are many issues that industries and companies pursue with government. And although it's sometimes difficult, government has a pretty tough challenge. I think the question is trust and respect for each other's role and understanding how that should happen going forward. And maybe as a new generation comes along, there'll be a more broad-mindedness. And that's going to be the dilemma in South Africa. You know, do we stick to the sort of middle of the road path or do we move maybe to the left, perhaps? I hope not. But that's going to be a debate and we've got to stand our corner and argue our point of view that business in South Africa, by and large, is a constructive part of the nation's well-being. It is, after all, 70% of the economy is in the private sector. And if I was sitting in government, I would be saying, how do we, how do we partner this a little more effectively? You say it's a generational change, but uh, it almost seems as though in South Africa we have this uh, uh, ability to hold on to the past because those who are in business will stick with business, those who grew up in politics will stick with politics. Right. Won't that change take a lot longer to, to take place? Well, I think it's very hard to tell. I mean, at the one end, we're quite a pragmatic society, and there is another generation. This is what I see at Gibbs all the time, a new generation of people in companies or on the MBA, and we have this fantastic program with school kids around the country. And there I do see a different generational change. In as much as my rep generation 40 years ago represented a new way of thinking, and many of those people came to influence in business, government, politics, and, and so on, I think that's a very natural progression in all countries. And maybe we need to encourage them and lift them up mm -hmm. a bit to say, state your claim, state your argument. A democracy is about a debate, not just about elections. What are they thinking, the younger? I think they, you know, it's, uh, we talked about this just a few days ago because I spent a few hours with the people facilitating this dialogue of these 160 kids in Joburg, two per school, from the best, uh, most elite to, to schools that are really tough. And they're remarkable people. And I think in one way they're less political but more politicized. So in some ways they are not so ideological, they want things to work. And they are, I think, willing to put their hands up to make them work. And I, I'm confident about that. I, I once gave a talk in a church hall where a very elderly man at the end said, I think the problem is your generation are going to wreck this country. And in a moment of inspiration, I looked at him and I said, what did your grandfather think of you? And this wonderful old twinkly eyes, he said, he thought I was a bit of a mess. And it was a wonderful moment. Each generation thinks the others should get out the way. Yeah. And the older generation think, well, we know better. And this is how life works in every country. But here there's a big energy because the, demo the demographics and urbanization and better education and more access to information mean we are a democratic country and we've got a rock solid constitution and that's our right. And we should engage in this discussion. So we, w we start getting worried if the constitution gets filled with. Yeah. Because it's mean, rock solid, as you say, yeah, at the moment. Yeah, but all things get snipped at and cut mm -hmm. and adjusted. These things aren't static the legal system, the media, they're not static phenomena. But there's, there's an inherent dynamism in South Africa. And I, I do fear the middle class maybe is less politically engaged than it was 30 years ago. Uh, we need that engagement. Um, it can't all be about the economy. It's got to be about the political economy. Because for any big company today, these things are inextricably linked. And that's why I say our knowledge about each other is so important. That's why at Gibbs, we really put an emphasis on this to say it's civil society the state and politics, business and the economy are all in a framework and we should understand them all and be active in them all. Just uh, finally, Nick, you did speak about trust, uh, building of trust between business and government. Are you going to be able to help in that regard? Well, I'm a minor player in a, in a, in a big pond, but I would like to play somewhat role at whatever I can. I'm going to take a break and get some fresh air and think about these things a bit more because as you said earlier, I've been very involved in the management. I've got a great team that I'm leaving in, in situ. Well, they'll appoint a new dean. So I'm satisfied there's a good time for me to move out of that role and maybe think a bit more about what other contribution I may be invited or, or able to make. 